Hello there future ACCAs, this is Vishnu Vijay, a proud fin trauma and in this session we will be discussing an exam technique and not just any exam technique, a really important exam technique that you can adopt in the advanced audit and assurance exam. Now this particular exam technique is in relation to the audit risk questions that can come up in your AAA exam. Okay, folks. So when it when we talk about the uh, audit risk questions, it's not just the audit risk that can be tested in the exam, isn't it? They can also ask for business risk, the risk of material misstatement as well, isn't it? So what exactly is the similarities and differences between each of these aspects? And how exactly can we structure our answer? This is exactly what we will be looking at in this particular session. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. And of course, before we deep dive into it, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon so that you can get notified for more informative content. Okay, folks, so let's deep dive in, shall we? Now, the first thing that you have to understand is as to what audit risk is and what business risk is and what the difference between these two terms are. Okay, so let's talk about that, shall we? First of all, what is a business risk? I have a definition here, so let's take a look at that. So a business risk is basically a risk resulting from significant conditions, events and circumstances, actions or inactions that could adversely affect an entity's ability to achieve its objective and execute its strategies or from the setting of inappropriate objectives and strategies. Okay. So we basically have learned as to what this already is and we learned as to what business risk is, what audit risk is, what risk of material misstatement is and various other components of audit risk is throughout our session. So we don't need to, uh, you know, look further deep dive into each of these concepts as of now. However, to put it simply, it's basically a risk that prevents the organization from achieving its objective, isn't it? Every organization has a purpose to conduct its business activities basically to achieve their corporate objective okay folks however if there are instances that can prevent the organization from achieving this objective we call those uh, risks or business risks isn't it keep this in mind okay folks that's basically as to what the idea here is here is now then what is audit risk then so when we talked about business risk it is something that affects the audit client or the business organization okay folks however Audit risk is something relating to the audit process and the audit firm, isn't it? So what exactly is the audit risk then? Let's read about it, shall we? The risk that the auditors express an inappropriate audit opinion when the financial statements are materially misstated. An audit risk is a function of material misstatement and detection risk. Okay, so we will look into that. Now, uh, what exactly is an audit risk? It is the risk that an inappropriate opinion will be provided by the auditors, isn't it? What is the ultimate objective of conducting an audit anyway? This is so that the auditor or the audit firm can provide reasonable assurance or an independent opinion on the financial statements, isn't it? What if this opinion is inappropriate? That is what the risk of audit risk is all about. Okay, folks, so that's basically the basic idea here. So business risk relates to the audit client and these are basically the events that prevents the particular audit client from achieving its objective, that's one thing. And then audit risk is something specific to the audit process, isn't it? it, it it's basically the risk that the auditors may provide an inappropriate opinion even when the, uh, it, when the particular financial statement is uh, materially misstated or uh, may not be presented appropriately, etc. Okay, folks, so that's basically the idea here. So that's basically the basic difference. Now, let's talk about another term, shall we? Then there is risk of material misstatement because in your exam, you may be asked to evaluate business risk, that's one. You may be asked to evaluate audit risk and you, and you may even be asked to evaluate the risk of material misstatements as well. Okay, folks, the first and foremost thing to understand is, to, is the difference between all of these, isn't it? This is exactly what we are looking at, okay, folks? So when it comes to risk of material misstatement, what are those? To put it very simply, when we talk about audit risk, there are three components to it, isn't it? So what are the three components? We have inherent risk, control risk, as well as detection risk as well, isn't it? So what is an inherent risk? These are those risks which are inherent within the financial statements. Okay, folks, that's basically it. And what are control risks? Control risks are those risks 
which are caused or which is basically a misstatement uh, caused within the financial statement due to poor internal control systems within the organization, isn't it? Or due to a lack of internal control systems within the organization, isn't it? So that is basically as to what a control risk is. And what about detection risk? This is basically the risk that the auditors may not identify the particular misstatement within the financial statement, isn't it? So that's basically it, okay, folks. So that's basically as to what the components are. Now, when we talk about audit risk, okay, if the examiner is providing your requirement, which requires you to evaluate the audit risks, then what do you have to do? You have to, you can mention the detection risk as your answer. We can uh, provide the inherent risk as your answer, as well as the control risk as well, isn't it? However, if the examiner asks you to evaluate risk of material misstatement, then what should you do? Then what you have to do is you have to state the inherent risk, the control risk, but not the detection risk. Why exactly is that? Because risk of material misstatement is basically the function of inherent risk as well as control risk, and it does not include detection risk. Because this is a basic point that you have to understand if you have to tackle the ORAAA exam. And of course, this is something that most students uh, fail to realize as well. Okay, folks, so remember that. <clears throat> now. Uh, so that's basically some theoretical aspects of course when we di discuss an exam technique we will have of course have to demonstrate this particular concept in an example isn't it so let's take a look at an example question right here shall we and this is basically a question taken from the acca technical articles in relation to this exam technique as well okay folks so let's read about it shall we daleko was established 20 years ago and has become known as a leading supplier of machinery used in querying industry and its customers operating queries which extract stone used mainly for construction okay so that's basically as to what this business organization is and what else and of course guys this is basically the basic scenario the requirement here is obviously to state the business risk or material misstatement sorry uh, the risk of material misstatement or the audit risk as well okay folks so just mentioning that now let's continue reading the scenario the risk, sorry, the machines and equipment made by Daliku are mostly made to order in the company's three manufacturing sites. Okay, that's understandable. Customer approach Daliku to design and develop a machine or piece of equipment specific to their needs. Okay, that's understandable. What else? Where management considers that the design work will be significant, the customer is required to pay 30% payment in advance, which is used to fund the design work. The remaining 70% is paid on delivery of the machine to the customer. Typically, a machine takes about three months to build, and a smaller piece of equipment takes on average of six weeks. Okay, so there's a significant delay, and what else? The design and manufacture of bespoke machinery involving payments in advance is increased during this year. Okay, that's a really important point to note. And what else? Dalico also manufactures a range of generic products which are offered for sale to all customers, including drills, conveyors, and crushing equipment. Okay, so there are quite a few, uh, I would say, information that was available within this particular scenario. We've understood as to what the scenario is, what Dalico does, and what exactly is its payment criteria as well, and how exactly this customer pay in this organization as well, isn't it? So, there are quite a few audit risks that I can point out as well, and uh, another business risk as well. So, first of all, let's talk about the business risk, shall we? How exactly can we effectively tackle a business risk? Let's take a look at that, shall we? So, as you can see here, I have provided two answers based on an issue that I've identified from that particular scenario. So, which one of these do you think would get the maximum amount of marks? Obviously, the second one, isn't it? Because it's a bit more well explained. I don't even have to read it. I can, I can just, you know, understand that just by looking at the answer itself, isn't it? So, let's take a look at each of these answers and understand as to what exactly the problem here is, shall we? So, what does answer one say? The company manufactures bespoke machines for clients, which may take six months to complete. Okay, so there's a significant time to manufacture the machines, isn't it? So that's basically a key point that we can highlight because if that is the case, what can happen? Then effectively, since there's too much of a duration in getting our product, 
the customers may be a bit reluctant to go to this particular organization, isn't it? So there would be, there is a business risk of losing out on sales due to this delay, isn't it? That is the particular idea that we have to convey in our answer, okay folks? And of course, we can't just uh, uh, simply explain that this is particularly the point. We have to provide a well-explained point, okay folks? So remember that. During this time, the company has funds tied up in work in progress, okay? And so that's particularly another issue as well, isn't it? So, we've identified the issue clearly in this particular answer and have we explained it? No, no, really, isn't it? We just briefly explained that, uh, okay, so there is an issue that we have too much of uh, particular uh, time taken to provide the bespoke, bespoke product that is the bespoke machinery. However, uh, there is a significant amount of, uh, I would say, funds tied up in work in progress, isn't it? That's basically it, okay, folks? That's basically all we're trying to say here. But is that a complete answer? No, not really. But because why exactly is that? Because if you think about it, are we asking the question why here to ourselves? No, not really, isn't it? If I provide an answer just like this, you should always ask the question why, okay, folks? So I provide an explanation. During this time the company has funds tied up in working progress okay so what exactly would the impact be okay folks why exactly is this a relevant point ask yourself this question and the answer will automatically come to you okay folks that's basically how you should think in the exam okay folks so keep this in mind so i would say i would get around one mark for stating this particular answer okay folks and of course uh, we can effectively see that there would be around 1.5 to 2 marks available for each well explained point and, uh, you know, you can also add value to that point by adding more relevant comments as well. Okay, folks, it depends upon the scenario. So, let's take a look at the second answer and understand as to how it's done, shall we? So, what exactly is this answer all about? The company manufactures bespoke machines for clients, which may have, which may take six months to complete. Okay, so we've identified the particular issue, just like what we did in the previous answer. However, what else did I do? During this time, the company has funds tied up in work in progress, which could give rise to cash flow problems, especially as 30% of deposits may not cover all of the upfront costs. This service has increased in the year, putting further strains on cash flow. What have I done here? I've identified the issue and I've provided a well-explained answer, isn't it? This is how you get the full marks when you are asked to write business risk, okay folks? Don't just identify and simply state the reason as to why this is a particular business risk. You have to provide a well-explained point with the impact on the organization, okay folks? Are we providing the impact on the financial statements here? No, no, really, isn't it? Because we are talking about business risk and business risk is something that affects the organization in achieving its objective, okay folks? So remember that. So identify the issue and provide a well-explained answer and of course also provide the impact of that particular risk as well. Okay, folks, that is how you can score marks in your exam. So keep this in mind. Okay, folks, identify, explain and explain the impact on the organization. Okay, folks, remember that. Now, so the impact was that there is a, an issue with the cash flows, isn't it? Since a lot of funds are tied up with, with work in progress, then there is uh, and since there is an increase, okay, folks, if you note this point, we also noted that the service has increased in the year, isn't it? What, what am I doing here? I'm using scenario information, isn't it? So you should try to use more scenario information in your answers as well, okay, folks, that's also an effective way to get more marks in the exam. Now, so that's basically all about the business risk. Now let's talk more about the audit risk, shall we? So when we talk about the audit risk, what is the approach that we can adopt here? If you're asked to evaluate audit risk or risk of material misstatement, you can just follow the same approach as this. Okay, folks, the first thing that you can do is you can calculate and conclude on the materiality of the issue. Materiality calculation is like the easiest marks available in the exam. Okay, folks, there's a component known as inherent risk common in both of these, isn't it? So inherent risk can also arise due to, you know, non-compliances with accounting standards as well, isn't it? So what you have to do is you just have to briefly explain or briefly describe as to what the relevant accounting issue in that particular situation is. Okay, folks, for example, in this particular example that we've written, we've read, uh, we've noted an issue regarding revenue recognition, isn't it? 
So they have a complex criteria for recognizing revenue and there is a risk that this particular revenue recognition criteria may not be in line with IFRS 15, isn't it? So that is something that we can point out as well. Okay, folks, that's one thing. And what else? Relate the risk in the scenario to the accounting treatment. That's basically it. Okay, folks, we're just relating the scenario information to the accounting treatment and we're just stating as to whether the management has done everything appropriately or not. Is there any risk that the management may not have done this in accordance with the accounting standard, etc. Okay, folks. And finally, and this is a really important point as well, you have to state the impact on risk on the financial statements when you're writing audit risk or risk of material misstatement. Okay, folks. So remember, guys, the ultimate uh, goal here is to understand as to what the impact on the financial statements would be, isn't it? So that's basically it. Okay, folks. When you're writing business risk, you state the impact on the organization and how it cannot achieve its objectives. Whereas when you're writing audit risk, you have to state the impact on the financial statements from an accounting perspective. Will the assets be overstated? Will the liabilities be understated, etc.? All these things should be provided. Okay, folks. So this is basically the structure that you have to follow when providing an answer for audit risk or risk of material misstatement. And the only difference that you have to note here is that when you're asked for risk of material misstatement, don't provide any detection risk. That's basically it. Okay, folks. Now, let's take a look at the sample answer here, shall we? Because we already identified the issue of revenue recognition from the scenario. Now, let's just explain as to how the answer should look like, shall we? So, under exam conditions, the student or candidate should provide the following answer. Let's read about it. So, the first thing that we should do is basically to provide a materiality calculation, isn't it? However, we don't necessarily have much financial data available in this particular question as of now. So I'm just going to skip that particular aspect for now. Moving on to the next aspect, explaining the accounting issue. Okay, so I have to identify and explain the issue here. So first of all, I've identified the instance from the scenario from which I've identified the risk. Okay, folks, what have I stated here? The companies receive 30% respond, uh, sorry, 30% deposit for the design of bespoke machinery. This is basically an information that I've identified from the scenario, isn't it? And of course, in the CBE environment, you can just copy paste it from the scenario itself, isn't it? So that's an easy method. Moving on to the next one. Revenue should be recognized over time or at a point of time when control is passed. Such points will be determined by the contractual terms. Payments received in advance of control passing should be recognized as deferred income. So I'm just explaining how the transaction ideally should have been treated as per IFRS 15, isn't it? As simple as that, okay, folks. So just describe the accounting principle here, okay, folks. When it comes to the AAA exam, the SBR level accounting standards play a really relevant role, okay, folks. You will have to explain some accounting treatments. You have to have that accounting knowledge of various standards that you've learned in the SBR paper, okay, folks. So keep that point in mind. And moving on. And of course, throughout our sessions, we've looked at a lot of uh, accounting standards as well, isn't it? We've revised through the entire SBR accounting standards once again as well, isn't it? So keep that in mind, hold that knowledge, keep on revising that till the day of your exam. Okay, folks, so moving on. Uh, I've explained the issue and I'll get marks for that. And what else? There is a risk that revenue might be recognized early when payment is received rather than being deferred. Okay. So what have I done now? What, now I've explained the issue, isn't it? So I'm just, you know, relating that particular accounting treatment to the scenario. That's basically it. Okay, folks, what is the issue here? The issue here is that there is always a risk that the payment or the revenue may have been recognized a bit early, even before satisfying the performance obligation or uh, before the control is being passed. Okay, folks, so that's basically the idea here. And what else? This could result in an overstatement of revenue and an understatement of liabilities for deferred revenue. What have I stated here? I've stated the impact on the financial statement, isn't it? What is the impact? The revenue would be overstated if I'm recognizing the revenue in an, at an early stage, isn't it? That's one thing. And of course, the liabilities, deferred income is basically shown uh, as is basically shown there okay folks so uh, it, it should ideally be shown as a deferred liability so since that is not the case then the liabilities are understated as well okay folks so that's basically the uh, idea here okay folks so keep this in mind we have yeah there we go so when you look at the structure of this particular answer 
what all things have I done? I haven't done the materiality calculation since I haven't done the particular, uh, since I don't have the financial data, but I have explained the accounting treatment. I have explained as to what the risk is, and then I provided the impact as well. And this is how you get full marks for the issue that you've identified from the scenario by presenting your answer in a structured manner. Okay, folks, remember that. So that's basically all about revenue recognition. This would result in an overstatement of revenue and an understatement of liabilities for deferred revenue. So basically, in this particular sentence, I've explained the impact on the financial statements, isn't it? So this is how you should structure the answer, isn't it? First of all, state the materiality, then the accounting treatment, then explain the risk, and finally state the impact of the risk on the financial statements, not the organization, the financial statements. Okay, folks, remember that. Remember that. That's a really important point to remember. Now, uh, that is how you can score the full marks available for an audit risk or risk of material misstatement question. Okay, folks? And this is like a definite question in the exam, isn't it? The examiner will either ask you to write an audit risk or a risk of material misstatement as well. Okay, folks? So practice a lot more questions to get the hang of answering these kinds of questions. Okay, folks? So keep this in mind. So that's all what I wanted to cover in this particular session. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or queries in relation to this, you can shoot them in the comment box. I'm always happy to answer them. Okay, folks. So this is Vishnu Vijay signing off for now. Are wait, wait. It seems that most of you who are watching this video have not subscribed to our channel. You would miss the new videos and the updates. Subscribe now and press the bell icon.